ability. This is for Multicon Productions. Um, this is the basic After Effects window. You know, you have all your standard things, your um, docs as they're called, and you can arrange them how you want to. But let's jump straight in. Um, to basically start using After Effects, you have to have a composition, and you can do that by going Composition, New Composition, and the window pops up. You can name it, and I'm going to name this Test and this is where you choose a preset there's dozens to choose from but i tend to stick with um, hd just because that's what i do and hd is always the best but it renders but rendering takes forever and you know 1920 by 1080 is full hd make sure you lock aspect ratio to 16.9 the frame rate i always stick with 29.97 because that's what um, most films nowadays use and it just makes things run smoothly the duration you can change to whatever your needs are, but I usually stick with seven seconds for intros anyway. And you click OK. And first thing you notice is you have this black window now, and this is called your workspace. Anything you do will pop up here, and this is where all of your animations, your text, your layering, all that will be done here. Your layers and such will be down here, and this is where you can organize and group them, and they will pop up here, and you can see them. On the project th on the project tag tab, which is over here, you see the test composition. If you open that, if you double click it, it pops up here. And so even if you you know click access and it closes down, you can still double click it and it pops right back up for easy access. So you can never actually lose it unless you delete it. Um, this window or this window project settings. Um, the only thing that I mainly use in this is the depth color settings and I usually use 16 bits per channel and that basically gives the color it pops makes colors pop out and so if you're doing something that involves a lot of colors you want to do this check 16 bits per channel because it makes colors pop out a lot and it gives it a nice color and this is the nav bar which um, most of the tools you'll be using are going to be here. You're most familiar with the selection tool, and the shortcut is V, and it's used for clicking and dragging and moving around in After Effects. The hand tool is, it drags the window, and it doesn't do anything but drag the window, and if you need to work on something that's over in the corner, you can just drag it instead of having to align yourself and get it confused, you can just drag it. If your mouse has a uh, wheel on it in the middle, like mine does, that's how you zoom in. And if you don't have a mouse, if you don't have a wheel, you can just select it here and zoom in or zoom out from here. This window that I have up right now is called the Title Action Safe, and you could check it right here, right there. And it helps you align things for 4x3 TVs, which is the old format, and 16.9, which is, you know, widescreen. Widescreen, naturally, is going to be the one that's farther out, this one. And 4x3 is the innermost one. This plus that's in the middle of the screen, along with the lines, are going to help you center whatever you're trying to do. So if you want to do a text, by clicking the text tool, you type in, uh, multicon, you can align it so it's centered perfectly and it helps you with compositing so everything looks nice and neat you can check that off um, and see as you create text it pops up here and if you want to duplicate the shortcut is control D and it duplicates and you can du duplicate as many as you want to and it's easy and you can move them around and you can edit them independently um, if you click layer and new, all of the things you can create will be right here. I just saw just a text. You can create a solid, which is what it says is it's just a solid um, color that you can move around. But it's used for when you want to do plugins. If you want to go effects and use a plugin, you can drop it on the um, solid, and it will replace the solid with that plugin as you see here next is a light and you can only use a light if you have a 3d setup and to do a 3d setup if you don't know 
you create a new salad or a text, anything, and make sure this last box is checked. You know it's the 3D because it has a 3D cube and it says 3D. If you check that, you see this, and this now allows you to move this within 3D space on the Z axis. On the Z axis. So you can pull it towards the camera or away from the camera. You can also rotate it in 3D space, rotate it. So if you want to, you can create a plane by rotating it. Well, you can rotate it. What is it? It's going to be right there and pushing it down. And so now, if you zoom out, now you have a floor. Of course, not a good floor, but still, it's still a floor. And you can grab the corners and make it wider. And now you have a floor. And press enter to na to rename these, by the way, and click floor. Now to create a light, you click layer, new, light. And this comes up. And you have different light, ty light, light types. Parallel, spot, point, and ambient. We're going to do a spotlight. And, you know, alright. And the light pops up. And immediately your blue floor disappears and that's because the light is too close from it you need to pull out well well maybe not there we go alright Next is a camera, and this is how you uh, manipulate within 3D space. You have different presets for cameras, and most of you, um, if you're not like a cinematographer, you won't know what these are. But the the lower it is, the wider the lens would be, and the higher the uh, narrower. And so you can do a 24. And if you want to do depth of field, which is um, Cl the closer things are to the camera, the not the uh, more focused they are. And you can check that in, and that's and immediately you see how it just jumps because it's a water camera lens. And you can rotate the camera, and you can maneuver the camera as well. And the camera will change everything that's in 3D that has the 3D checkbox checked. Anything that has 3D checked will be manipulated by the camera. A null object. Um, it's kind of hard to explain because it's nothing really, but you can link this up to something like a tracker point and this can be the tracking data. So if you want to track something like footage to stabilize, you would use this to track it. That's all I can really say about that for right now. Um, shape layer is just creating a shape with the shape tool right here. You can create as many as you want to. Adjustment layer. Adjustment layer will affect every single layer that's underneath it. And this, I use this a lot when I'm color correcting footage and films because it affects everything directly underneath it. And so instead of applying the same effects to every single layer, and you know, you can have maybe 50 layers in one scene at a time, and that takes a lot of time. And you can uh, use an adjustment layer to apply that directly to every single layer. And you only have to do it once. The character tab over here controls your font. Not only the font, but the size, the shape, the color. So if you type in test, you see it's red because it's already selected red. And you can change the fill color, the fill color to whatever you want. As well as the font. And I have a lot of fonts. And, you know, this is good. And select 3D, and now we can push it back. This is the timeline, and this is where all your animations and stuff will appear. Like I said, I set the composition for 7 seconds, and so that's the last thing. Which you can select it to wherever you want to. And you can zoom in to frame, to like exact frames if you're working that in depth, or it can go by seconds, half seconds, milliseconds, whatever you want. And that's already been done here. You can also move and move around the actual layers and when they appear and so if I'm at two seconds 
if I don't want the text to come in at two seconds, I can just drag this and move it to two seconds, and it won't appear for two seconds. You can also, if you want to shorten it, you can also use the brackets, the um, bracket keys next to uh, P. You select it and select the um, left bracket if you want to begin, and the left, the right bracket will close it, and so that aligns it. If you're working and you have a lot of stuff and you have, let's, as an example, you just have a lot of stuff going on and you want to see this um, in a bigger version, press the tilde key and the tilde key is above the tab key and to the left of the one key. It's the weird looking sign. If you press that, it hides in um, this entire um, your layers and your task and it hides all of that it hides everything and so you can view it up close and still maneuver it but you have the full screen and you can press the tilde key to minimize that again alternatively you can select the layers and hit tilde key and it'll hide everything besides the layers and so if you're working with you know 100 200 layers it helps you it will help you a lot and no one's ever going to use this many layers, but regardless, that's how you would do that. Um, for playback, when you're if you're working and you want to pre-render something because you just made a quick, and I'm going to do this quick animation so I can show you what I mean. Okay. If you want to preview that, you press the zero button on the numpad, and it it's called a pre-render and it pre-renders it so you can see it within After Effects and if you don't like it you can maneuver it now what I just did I set and they're called keyframes the first one is the start keyframe and it's at zero for rotation and the second one will be called the end front the end keyframe and that's where it's gonna end and with rotations in After Effects it fills in the blank so you can start at zero and end up at 180 and that's the animation in between and you see how it's rotating on the axis it's rotating on this pan behind tool right there and now if I drag it to this side it's going to rotate off of that as well you can make it in the middle in the center and it will rotate off the center. And so it all depends on how you want it to rotate and where you want it to rotate. Um, Hotkeys for layers. P is position. And that's just the... And you see wherever I move it, the position changes. And that's just wherever it is in 2D or 3D space. So if I check, even if I check 3D, it's still going to move regardless. Um, another one is T on the keyboard that brings the opacity and that shows whether it's visible or invisible you can set this for um, if you want to do a fade in for a title this is how you would do it it's not I mean it's super simple but that's how you would do it the um, other shortcut is R which brings up the rotation and if you're in 3d space you have more than one option you can really get creative and rotate a lot of different parts. Um, if you press A, it brings up the anchor points. And the anchor point, it's kind of hard to explain, but the anchor point is wherever in 2D or 3D space, wherever it's anchored on the position. It's not the actual position. It's not P. If you press AA twice, it brings up the material options. Material options usually are for 3D are for 3D situations. And you can accept shadows, lights, you can change the ambient and diffuse, the shininess, the metal, it really depends on what you want to create. Um the um the keyboard shortcuts B and V will shorten the length of your composition. B starts and V will end it. Now this is the work area. 
if you're rendering something, it'll only render what's in the work area, not the entire thing. So if you're working on something that's only between this part right here, it'll only render what's selected in this. And so if you have 7 seconds worth of footage, you want to make sure it starts at 0 and ends at 7 to get the entire thing. If you want to render only the first second, just drag it to the end is at 1 second, and it will only render that first second. This right here is the resolution sample factor. If you go to full, it will preview as a full 1080p, which, and if you have a lot of things going on, like it's hectic and it makes your computer run slow. And so you usually work in half, but if your computer still can't handle half, you can do third or quarter. Now, it reduces the resolution within the workspace, but it's still going to render out 1080p, or whatever your um, original um, preset was. And so if I do um, 468 by 60, whatever half of that is, and a third and a quarter of that is, will be how you're rendering. Now, rendering, there's a shortcut, it's control, shift, and backslash, and it brings up the render queue. And the render queue is how, whoa, the render queue, the render queue is how you render everything in After Effects. And it pops up whatever the composition name is, and so I did that for test, and test pops up. You click, if you click output module, you'll be able to change the formats. I usually render now in QuickTime with H.264 as the compressor. You can change that in there. If you have audio, make sure make sure audio output is checked or else you're screwed and you have to re-render that and that just becomes a pain from re-rendering and rendering and re-rendering. If you click render settings, click best settings, you can see quality, make sure it's best and the resolution, if you somehow mess up, just make sure it's full and it will render at whatever the full resolution is. And if you click output 2, this will change the location and you can name it to whatever you want to. And you click render and you're off. And that just about covers... oh wait, no. Animation presets. Um, they come default with any After Effects version and I'm using CS4 because my computer isn't 64 bit yet. If you click animation, you can apply a variety of um, preset animations from text to sound effects, you know, to your plugins, anything um, preset. Now, you can create your own presets as well and save them wherever you want to for easy access. Alright guys, that's, that's about it for this. Thanks for watching.